Let's talk about brand baby. Let's get started with this week's Hair Extensions Business Masterclass. Give it up for the one and only Charlotte Sticky Icky Green. Here for you, whatever you need, we literally got it. Super excited to be kicking off this week with you because I know you have been dying to get started building your brand. Little do you know, we have been laying the groundwork for your booming business and incredible brand every single day that you've attended this class. Today, we are going to touch on brand a bit more, but all of this week, we are taking care of business. I know that a lot of you appreciated um, me sharing the what it takes to make a million dollars video and that I was really honest about the hard part of being a boss. Well, another thing that people don't really mention too often that I think it's important for you to understand is the fact that in addition to everything you're going to have to do for your company, like all of the marketing and packing up your orders and taking your foot, like in addition to all that stuff, you are going to have a secondary job that is just maintaining the legal side of your business. Taxes, registrations, fees, different things that you need to monitor, all of that stuff needs to be taken care of the right way. So this week, we are dedicating this class, this hair extensions business masterclass to making sure that you have the information you need to build your brand on solid land and not anyone else's trademark property to build your business and not have to worry about a bunch of random fees coming at you because you didn't register it the right way. Like all of these things that could lead to the detriment of your company, we're just gonna eliminate them this week. We're handling business. Today, we are setting the tone for the rest of the week by deciding what our brand is going to I need to be careful to not say look like because then you guys think we're going to be talking about colors and fonts and the layout of your what we're not going to be talking about that because that does not make a brand that is one aspect of your brand but that is not your brand we're starting with brand because you deciding what your brand is going to feel like feel you deciding what your brand is going to feel like is going to dictate how you name your company. That goes first. And then you have this name, this introduction that helps to introduce your brand or company or service to the world based on that. What we're doing here is reverse engineering our success. We're starting with the end result and then doing the things that need to be done for us to get there. I had you work on your avatar last week. Go ahead and check out that video. Here's the link in case you missed it. But I had you work on that first so that you can now use that information, use that person you created that represents your perfect customer. Use that person to help give you the answers to these questions, to help guide you and tell you what your brand should look like so it speaks to that specific person. So when we're working here, you're not making anything new up. You are picking up the blueprint that we had you draft in the last session, and you're using what you've already written down to guide your answers. When people think about a brand, they think about the slogan or they think about the Nike check mark and the logo but that again does not make a brand what really makes a brand is what you actually think about Nike like whether they have the check mark or not what are you thinking about the company when nobody representing the company is in the room what is it that inspires you to buy from this brand it's trust it's quality it's because you know that they have partnered with some of the biggest athletes in the world. And if these products are good enough for them to co-sign and put their names behind them, then I guess I can get a couple of these sneakers for the gym. Jordans. <laughs> how many people have dunked that, that rock the, or how many people have never dunked 
that spend hundreds of dollars on those dunks. There's that guy on the side that has an incredible brand, two massive brands linking up that mean power, that mean, that mean fulfillment, that mean realizing your, like, you see all of these words, how many times do we mention a color? Like how, how many, none, because that's not the important part. Nobody really cares if Nike were to change their logo to red or to green or it's not that serious. What is serious is the brand of the business, the brand of the company or the reputation of the company. That is, I think, how you should look at your brand. And like I say in most of these videos, unless you define what you want that to look like, unless you are going about taking action and making decisions that will consciously reflect on the way you want your brand to be perceived, you are leaving it up to chance. And if you have the opportunity to go ahead and decide what people think about you, why wouldn't you take it? We're here to make money, right? Not play play money. Like if, if you're not really trying to, trying to come up on this opportunity, then you don't need to do this work. But if you are trying to change your life, if you are trying to use this opportunity to build your business, to help you create the dream life we had you draft, then take time to think about your brand and how others will think about it. So you know how everyone found out about Drake and his secret son? Oh my gosh. You don't remember the Pusha T beef? Pusha T and Drake? I know that. That was, that was yeah, he, the was Yeah, he, yes, Adonis. Oh, because he called him out saying, yes, you have a kid. That, exactly, oh, that, that was, was the whole thing. I thought you meant like this past week or no. something. <laughs> okay. Okay. <laughs> Mr. Suave, he makes the women feel good. He talks about us empoweringly and isn't always calling us bitches. Like, his brand is the ladies' man. So when we all found out that he had a kid that he had been hiding for like a year with a porn star, it would, like, the internet was in an uproar. It would have been really easy for you to try and get some cheap likes by reposting one of the memes that, one of the many memes that most people thought were funny at the time, just because it was like, what's going on here? It would have been easy to repost one of these memes and get some cheap likes, but when you think about how you want your company to be perceived, when you think about the fact that with every single post you are building your company's brand, you are building your company's reputation, you are saying something about yourself and your business more than you are about whatever is trending, then you might think twice about it. Think about the adjectives that I used to describe Nike's brand. Think about the adjectives I used to describe the Jordan brand. People love the crayon case, which is Super Sense brand. The woman that I talked about in the what it takes to make a million dollars in business video um, because it's fun and it's colorful and she is so tied to her brand and she's so authentic and you know that she is putting out the best possible product that she can and that so many other people love it like love authentic real fun these are the adjectives that reflect on her brand that being said Question number one for your homework. What do you want people to feel about your brand? Use feely words. Get deep with it. This is your, this is your brand. This is your vehicle to freedom. What do you want people to feel about your brand? Question two. What do you want people to say about your brand? I know those two questions are really, really similar, but... For example, when you think about Oprah's brand, I'll talk about how that brand makes me feel. I feel inspired. I feel like I can conquer the world if she did it. I feel like I am reassured that I can reach whatever heights I can because I see someone that's reached beyond what any anyone ever thought she could um, on my screen every day. It's... She's just like a testament to what is possible when the human spirit refuses to quit. Would I say that to, no, I don't, I don't get all that touchy and feel, that's how I feel 
about her brand? What would I say about her brand? That I think she's the role model that every woman needs. I think she's the sister, friend, mother, cousin that every woman should have. I think that she has done so much good for society. Maybe she realizes it, but I I think there's so much it would be impossible for her to understand how far her ripples. Like similar questions, similar responses, but different. Feeling what you would keep inside, what you wouldn't really be too worried about sharing with someone else, the things that motivate you, the things that inspire you, the things that scare you. Those are the feely things. Then what you would say about their brand, how people would talk about their brand. What do you want people to say to each other when they're discussing your brand? That's question two. And the last question How can you position your brand so that people take notice when you enter the hair extensions industry? I'm going to have to get really creative for that one, or maybe not too, too creative. But how can you position, remember we talked about unique positioning, we talked about those personal characteristics, we talked about your personal history and how there is so much strength and value in your story and what you can bring to this space taking that into consideration and then your bonus tell me about a brand that you love and tell me why does it inspire you does it motivate you does it remind you of the power that you have within yourself i want like all the feels in the comment section i want to be moved to tears i want to go and buy some stuff from these brands if they're moving you guys like that then like I love good advertising a lot of the times I'll just be like "Ooh, that was a really good commercial I'm a buy I don't need that but I'm a buy it <laughs> just cause <laughs> give me something to buy tell me about a brand that you love tell me why you love it that's it for today's hair extensions business master class I'll see you guys right back here tomorrow we are talking names